Karen Pence, the wife of Mike Pence, Vice President of the United States, finds President Donald Trump, quote, reprehensible and just totally vile. That claim comes from a former campaign aide quoted in a new profile of the vice president by The Atlantic's McKay Coppins. In the piece titled God's Plan for Mike Pence, not only do we learn that Karen Pence was disgusted by Donald Tra Trump in the wake of the release of the Access Hollywood tape, we also learn that the vice presidential candidate himself was participating in a kind of soft coup at the time as panicking billionaire donors were considering offering Trump $800 million to drop out of the race. According to several Republicans familiar with the situation, Pence made it clear to the Republican National Committee he was ready to take Trump's place as the party's nominee. Since that time, Mike Pence has shown nothing but total devotion to Donald Trump, quote, an obedient deputy whose willingness to suffer in dignity and humiliation at the pleasure of the president appears boundless. But as Coppin writes, Coppins writes, for all his aw shucks modesty, Pence is a man who believes heaven and earth have conspired to place him in the heartbeat or an impeachment vote away from the presidency. With me now, McKay Coppin, staff writer at The Atlantic, who wrote that fantastic piece on Mike Pence. It is a great piece of reporting and a great piece of writing. I want to start with Reince Priebus, who says, you never called him or contacted to talk about this, and your characterization of the soft coup is totally, totally wrong. What do you say? <laughs> well, look, he can deny it if he wants. My sourcing is, is solid. Uh, and as for his claim that I never reached out, I emailed him twice and left a message uh, at his office. I don't know what he's talking about there. Yeah, Ryan's previous. Um, all right. Well, <laughs> uh, uh, th there is sort of, I mean, here's the core of this piece, right? The core of the piece is this kind of literally deal with the devil. I mean, not literally, figuratively deal with the devil, <laughs> where here's this very genuinely pious man, genuinely devout man, um, who, is, who is now sort of the subordinate to a person who's just manifestly has none of the shared values with him or the movement he represents. How does that work? Yeah, well, that that is the, the fundamental contradiction of, of Mike Pence. And, uh, and, and it's also, frankly, a compromise. It's a compromise that he had to make. Uh, but it's also a compromise that millions of conservative Christians in this country had to make last year and continue to make. And, and that compromise is also playing out in Alabama now. Yeah. That The story of Mike Pence, in a lot of ways, is the story of the religious right, a story of kind of the, the compromises of principles and standards and values uh, that they're willing to make to basically attain political power. And, and my, in Mike Pence's case, it's all wrapped up in both his faith and his personal ambition. As you, you read in that introduction, he really is a man who believes that he has kind of a sense of destiny about him, that he is destined for great things, that God wants him to be in the political realm, uh, kind of pushing forward his will. And, and, the, and, and when you think like that, I think it's easy to make a lot of compromises and to rationalize a lot of things. I want to play this clip of him on the Christian Broadcasting Network because it's a perfect example of, of the kinds of straight-faced um, I don't know, untruths that he is called upon to utter in his job. Take a listen. Cabinet Bible studies, praying in the Oval Office, evangelicals around the country are going, wow, it seems like a new day in Washington. What is going on, as we would say spiritually, at the White House? I've been with this president in the Oval Office with, with religious leaders when, when people have asked to pause for a moment of prayer, and the president readily embraces that. Let me be clear, President Trump is a believer, and so am I. What's amazing is the straight-faced, earnest delivery of things that are obviously untrue. I mean, the pre I mean, I guess maybe the president believes in God, but the idea that he has a shred of religiosity in him is just belied by every liter literally everything we know about him. Well, right. And it is almost a little unnerving to watch the way that Mike yes. Pence will um, kind of be, <laughs> he'll be called upon to to both defend Trump, to champion him, to say things about him that, that, that are just so clearly untrue. I mean, remember the vice presidential debate when he would flatly deny that Trump ever said things that he clearly had said. <laughs> it, 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 was, it was kind of unnerving. And a lot of the Christians that I've talked to who have known Mike Pence over the years, I, they told me, you know, 
It was alarming to watch this because e even Democrats said, in Indiana told me, you know, for all our ideological dis disagreements with Mike Pence, we always thought he was a good, decent man at heart. He, he was a man of genuine devotion. And a lot of them said that he, it was just, it was very unnerving to see the way that, in their words, he sold his soul to Donald Trump. There's this, this question about the sort of degree of Machiavellian plotting from Mike Pence, right? There are always these questions about, well, he's sort of waiting for the, he's got his eye on the throne. And now there's a complicating factor of the Mueller investigation, which as of yet has yet to reach him. And yet we know that he was the head of a transition that is now absolutely under the microscope of this investigation. Yeah. How much is that weighing on him and the people around him? Well, definitely the people around him are, are talking about this. There, I, you know, <laughs> there's no question that they're a little worried because, as you said, he was the head of the transition. Now, we don't know what he knew. You know, we've, the, the, the official line coming out of the vice president's office has always been that, uh, you know, for example, in the case of Mike Flynn, Mike Flynn simply lied to him. He didn't know uh, anything about the, the meeting with the Russians or anything like that. That, uh, you know, maybe that's true, maybe it's not. Uh, certainly, the the people in Trump's orbit I know that I've talked to are worried about about Mike Pence. They're worried about how loyalty how loyal he will hmm. stay to Trump uh, next year as this investigation continues, as potentially more indictments come down, as the kind of vultures start to circle over the White House. You know, there might come a point where Trump really needs to rely on Mike Pence and his contacts on the Hill and his deep ties in in the Republican establishment. And, and there's an it's an open question whether he'll be there for him. All right, McKay Coppins. Uh, again, great piece. Uh, check it out. Thanks for making time. Thanks, Chris. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.